Well, I can guarantee you everyone in this room has secret knowledge. Now, that doesn't mean it's something really important or profound knowledge. Just maybe surprising, not alarming. So, a lot less, I know where bodies are buried. <laughs> and a lot more like, I have a shortcut for you to road traffic. <laughs> So I'm going to share my secret knowledge with you, and it won't be a secret anymore, but maybe you'll get to use it. So my secret knowledge is that I know how to scare a Taekwondo instructor, a true, big, burly man who considers himself a tough guy. And I'm only five foot tall. So I started taking Taekwondo when I was 39 years old because I had lost a bet with my daughter. <laughs> Don't bet with your daughter. So she'd been taking Taekwondo for a couple of years and she really loved it. I mean, just couldn't get enough. And I really loved watching her. And I loved watching her so much that people started to notice me loving watching her. And invariably the instructor would come up and say, you know, you could do class, you know, join right in. Other moms do. And I would say, no, no, no I'm good, I'm, I'm good. All the gym teachers, and dance instructors, and basketball coaches, and baseball coaches, that's my dad, all said collectively, no, not for you. That, that's, that's not true. Don't do that. But I had lost the step, so I had to. So I joined class. And of course, you know, you can't go without just one parent. I made my husband join too. So at 39 years old, we joined class. Now, this instructor was exactly what you would expect from a karate instructor. So, tall, burly man, big, long, ZZ top beard, rode a motorcycle to class every day, snow, didn't matter. <coughs> Had a big knife he'd wear on his belt every day, and you knew he was packing because he had his concealed weapons license. He taught self-defense, crab and gaw, you name it, he done it. So here I am going to join his class. So, as you might have guessed, physical things come hard for me. I do not learn to do physical things quickly. So I practice a lot. It took me three years to go from white belt to almost a black belt. So in that time, you do a lot of stuff that you're not usually comfortable with. Jumping, running, walking, not falling down. I broke toes, I bruised bones, I, you name it, I did. But I enjoyed it. And yes, I fell down a lot. <laughs> so that was okay. But as years went on, I did get better and I practiced a lot. So to go from a white belt to a black belt, you take a lot of tests. And before you get to take a test, you have to get permission to take a test. So when it's your turn, May I have permission to test my dirt belt, sir? Yes, do the thing. So, lots of that went on. Now, I did get better, and he expected perfection from adults. Kids, you might get a little curved, but adults, nah, you gotta be right on time, every time. So, three years later, about ready to start taking these tests to get permission to take the big test. I had a key to the building. I practiced six days a week. I practiced on my lunch shower. I practiced in parking lots. My husband thought I was nuts because I was just constantly walking around doing crazy stuff. He was too. <laughs> but he looked a lot better. But that's okay. So it was my turn to test. And I to do this to do this test, we had to demonstrate lots of stuff. Two board breaks, two forms, which are choreographed fights, five minutes of continuous sparring and a physical fitness test for a 39 year old. So, I thought I would take it easy. Start with the easiest thing first, the first form. It's what they teach little kids. Even a six year old learns to do this. It's only about 16, 18 moves. Sir, may I have permission to demonstrate my form? Go for it. Stepped out and he went. <laughs> I failed on the first move. I failed about seven more times. And I thought to myself, I'm never going to pass this test. I'm, I'm just never going to pass it. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. 
So after class, as I was kind of despairing, he said, Stephanie, demonstrate your form. So I was already nice and sweaty from a long sparring match. Walked out onto the mat. Permission to demonstrate my form, sir. Go for it. And I started. And he let me get to the halfway point. Oh my gosh, my hands must be doing something right. He let me turn. I'm almost finished. He's going to let me finish this for the first time ever. And I finished my bow and I stood up, and I reached into his pocket, and pulled up this really small roll of black electric tape. I had passed. Oh my gosh, I had passed. Well, at that moment, I lost all composure, and I got really worked up, and I started doing this and kind of bouncing around, and I was so excited. And I went to run and hug this man with his big, long, ZZ top grip and his big knife on his side. And as I got close to him, he leaned back with this look of absolute terror on his face. He knew I was coming for that hug. <laughs> well, I stopped, put my feet back down, looked around for what was left of my dignity, <laughs> and walked sedately up to get my testing stripe. And that is how you terrify a Taekwondo instructor. They're afraid of sweaty hugs and Miss America hands. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>